So Jacob Rees-Mogg has urged Rishi Sunak to strike a deal with Nigel Farage before the general election. Successive opinion polls on Wednesday and Thursday showed reform just two percentage points behind the Conservatives. Current projections suggest that Mr Farage's party is on track to cost the Tories dozens of constituencies at the next election, of course, July the 4th, potentially reducing them to fewer than 100 seats. So could a deal be mutually beneficial or do Reform UK have enough momentum to go it alone? Let's get the views of former Conservative MP and the country's first ever UKIP MP and the co-founder of Vote Leave, Douglas Carswell. Douglas, great to have you back on the show again. Would hey, an election, hello there, would an election pact, Douglas, suit both sides? I'm absolutely delighted that Nigel is running in my old seat and I hope he wins, but absolutely no, there, there must be no pact. Why? Because the Conservative Party in its current form is not worth preserving. Look, Nigel Farage has spent his entire career doing what the Conservative Party ought to do and then cutting a deal with them because they appear to come to their senses on, on Brexit and on, on, on this and on that and then regretting it. I, I think we need to recognise that Conservative voters are not going to get Conservative administration while the current Conservative Party exists. So don't make a deal with them. They cannot be reasoned with. They are not Conservative run as an organisation. There are only a handful of genuine Conservatives in the Conservative Party. It would be madness to do a deal with them. Um, I, I, I think we, we need to see the displacement of the current Conservative Party by a genuine principled centre-right party. Uh, is there anything that Rishi Sunak could offer to Reform UK that would catch Nigel Farage's eye? I mean, this is a guy that's staring defeat in the face. These are desperate times. Perhaps it's time for desperate measures. I mean, far be it from me to advise Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak's own advisers now seem more intent on parachuting them themselves into what, what I was going to describe as safe conservative seats, but I'm not sure there is such a thing anymore. No, I mean, I think if I was to advise Rishi Sunak, I would, you know, it's beyond salvation now. Um, clearly, he is a third rate political operator. He um, has incredibly poor judgment, as we saw when he left the D-Day celebrations or the D-Day commemorations early. He's failed to do the basic things that a conservative administration should do, control the borders, uh, reduce the size of government, uh, uh, lower taxes. Um, I, I, I just don't think there's any any good outcome for him and for his party. Um, there's something tragicomic about the whole thing. I mean, having removed and conspired to remove Boris Johnson, who had a massive majority and a massive popular mandate, these third raters are now getting their comeuppance. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's it's karma. Um, I, I don't think there's anything that can or should be done to stop the um, inevitable annihilation. And the, the, the sooner July 4th happens, the better. Uh, of course, the Rishi Sunak would argue he is a true conservative. He has uh, reduced illegal boat crossings by about 30 uh, percent. He has started to reduce taxes, national insurance, 900 pounds a year for working Brits. He's got inflation down. And I think the economy is growing at around uh, the top end of the G7 league table. You've got warm words for Nigel Farage, but Nigel is a divisive figure, unpopular, perhaps arguably, uh, within large portions of the country. Many think that Reform UK may not win a single seat at the election. So why are you backing them so enthusiastically, Douglas? Well, they may or may not win. I mean, when I left the Conservative Party and ran as a, a, in, in, as a UKIP candidate in Clacton all those years ago for a party that had never previously won a seat, I didn't sit there and make a calculation, am I likely to win? I, I, I did happen to win twice, as it were, as it, as it turned out. But um, I, I stood by my principles. And despite the fact that the uh, electoral system is massively weighted against reform and a, a political insurgency of this kind, I, I think there's a time when you just need to stick to your principles. And this is such a time. Now, you, you talked about some of the things that Rishi Sunak said he was going to do. One thing particularly caught my eye. There's a promise that they're going to abolish inheritance tax. Interestingly, that was the very thing the Conservative Party in opposition promised that put them ahead of Gordon Brown nearly 14 years ago. Isn't there something comically pathetic about the fact that 
a party has spent 14 years failing to do what it pledged to do 14 years ago, and in order to stave off electoral oblivion, is now saying it's going to do that thing. I mean, you can't make it up. Every time you hear Rishi Sunak make a concrete pledge to you know, um, uh, protect women's spaces, to tackle the woke takeover of our public institutions, to cut taxes. It just makes people think, what's he been doing for all these years? Where, where's he been for um, you know, all of these years? Uh, they could have done things to transform this country for the better. Um, they've, they've comprehensively failed. OK. And, you know, uh, well, they Douglas, have to go. Douglas stay, stay with us. Let's bring in my top pundits, if I can, including Nina Mishkoff. Crystal Biggins and Neil Wallace. Nina Mishkoff, do you think the Conservatives should reach out to Reform UK? Should they do a deal with Nigel Farage and bring the right together? Should the Tories go in a Farage direction? Look, you know, they're in such a desperate strait, they could go, go in any direction and still lose. It doesn't make any <laughs> bit of difference at all at this moment in time. And, you know, Rishi Sunak, having said we... You know, his thing is, we've got a plan, we've got a plan, and the Labour doesn't have a plan. Well, he didn't have a plan when he launched um, the election. I mean, plan B is always if wet in village hall. But, 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 but uh, Nina, would a deal with Nigel Farage have you, as a voice of the left, quaking in your boots? No, because it'd be, it'd be way too extreme, and it, you do not win elections from the extremities. Well, do, do you, you think Nigel Farage middle? is an extremist? Yes, he is. Of course, he is. Where's your evidence for that? Well, he's about he's he's further right than most of the most of the Tory party, surely. Okay, I mean, Neil Wallace. Uh, what do you think? Uh, it's kitchen sink time for Rishi Sunak. The guy's got nothing to lose. Does he go to bed with Nigel Farage, so to speak? Uh, the vital word to remember in this is Brexit, hmm. because Brexit was what Nigel Farage uh, basically set up and achieved and won. And that is his appeal. And uh, people give much of the credit now to um, Boris Johnson, and he deserves uh, credit for it as well. But it was largely a Farage creation. The, I think the question's the wrong way round in a way, Mark. It's what can Sunak offer Farage mm. to actually get on board? And if I was Farage, particularly thinking back to the last Tory Lib Dem mm -hmm. alliance and the way that worked out for the junior party, I would be holding out for some very, very high stakes indeed, such as the promise of being the deputy prime minister, for instance. Right. Um, but uh, I think there's there are two things happening here. One, uh, the country um, is at that point that enough is enough. There's been too much gone right. wrong. And it's not all Rishi Sunak's fault, incidentally. It's ludicrous to blame him for, if you like, the pandemic. It's ludicrous to blame him for the effect of um, Russia attacking the Ukraine and triggering worldwide inflation. OK. You know, all of these came into it. But the guy with the cards in his hand is Nigel Farage, not least because what an operator when you compare to the piece of wood that is called Keir Starmer mm. and, sadly, um, a man I have okay. got a lot of time for, Rishi Sunak. OK, uh, of course, uh, you know, Keir Starmer could point to his lead in the polls, suggesting that he's a lot more charismatic than a piece of wood. He would argue that the country's ready for change. Uh, begins. Nigel Farage is as hated as he is loved in this country. Would it be wise for Rishi Sunak to do an 11th hour deal? He's probably the most charismatic out of all the politicians that we have. I think if he doesn't come in on this, at, this, at the end of this, mm. beginning of this election, I think give him five years and he'll be there ruling the Conservative Party. But what party. would you say to the thousands, maybe millions of people that can't stand Nigel Farage and consider him begins to have done untold damage to this country. I, but I, he, he has. At least he has personality. And at least he knows what he's saying. I mean, the other night when okay. the BBC, um, when they were all there shouting at each other like fishwives, the women, okay. he was very, very clever. 
All right. He stands uh, there, straight, looks at the camera and says what he means. Uh, Nina, do you agree with that briefly? Uh, no, I don't necessarily agree with that. I mean, the thing is, Nigel Farage, if you look at it from, from a, a sane centrist point of view, is a very dangerous man because he is so glib and so uh, mm. brilliant at communicating. And thanks okay. to him, our, our country, no. through Brexit, Douglas, has been you get destroyed. The la- Sorry to interrupt you, no, Nina. Douglas, no. you get the last word. You say, is Nigel Farage divisive? Well, we've had 20 years of consensus amongst the political establishment that has failed to do the fundamentals for our country and has bankrupted our country. Perhaps it's time for a, a little bit of uh, you know, divisiveness to undermine the Westminster consensus. I think the Conservative Party problems, if I may say so, are not policy related. They're now personnel. They're just too many third raters as ministers, too many fourth raters in the cabinet. You could give them Margaret Thatcher's manifesto and they would still fall flat on their face. The Conservative Party is institutionally incompetent because for 20 or 30 years is recruited and elevated and promoted people on the basis of something other than competence. They, they deserve what they get on July okay. the 4th. The best chance is a new party like happened in Canada 30 years ago. Uh, Douglas, what a treat to have you on the show. You must join us again soon, live for the United Thank States. You. Uh, there you go, former UKIP MP, the co-founder of Vote Leave, Douglas Carswell. Uh, let's go to the candidates standing in Clacton. Joe Van Owusu Nepal, Labour, Giles Watling, Conservative, Matthew Ben Selum, Lib Dems, Nigel Farage, Reform, Natasha Osborne, Green Party. Okay, folks.